Today we're going to talk about Texas style low and slow brisket. We're going to talk about three easy steps you need to do to help you on your way to a good brisket. We're going to talk about the brisket itself, low and slow, and the slice. So come on with me today and let's make a brisket. When you go to the store and look for a brisket, there's several things you want to look for. First, you want to look at the, the flat part of the brisket, which is this part. And you want to take it, and if you can, look for one that has even across the ends. The more even you can get it, the more even your cook's going to be. And pick it up and feel it. If it's soft and pliable and not hard, and you can also bend it. So if you bend it and it bends, that means it's going to be tender. There's just the right amount of fat. You, you know, you're not worried about exterior fat on a brisket because you're going to trim most of this off anyways. So this is what you want to look for in a brisket when you go to the grocery store. Some of the things you want to look at when you're trimming a brisket is some of these hard fatty areas you're going to want to trim off. All this silver skin here on this flat, you want to trim as most of this off as you can so your seasoning can penetrate your meat and your smoke can penetrate your meat. Any loose hanging meat that's going to be off discolored meat here on the edges you want to cut that off because that's not going to taste good and also it's going to burn if it's if it's a very small piece of meat so we want to do that and when we flip it over here we're looking at the fat cap here on this brisket here it's pretty good fat cap already now you spend all that time cleaning this brisket now comes the important part we want to go ahead and season this brisket and what you want to do we're going to do is get a rub here and we want to do this liberally you want to coat your brisket liberally but you want to do it evenly All right, let's talk about the most important part of your brisket, the low and slow. So now we want to talk about our wood selection. We want to select some wood that's dry, been aged, it's not green, it's going to burn clean because you want a clean burning fire. You want some smoke, but you don't want too much smoke because if you get too much smoke, it's going to turn bitter and you're over smoke your meat. After you got your dry wood selected, get your fire going, the next thing is keeping your temperature constant. You want a constant temperature, just like this one, between 250 and 275. You want to keep your brisket going about that temperature, and that's going to give you your low and slow. Alright, now that you got your fire going, you got your pit at a stable 250 to 275, it's time to put our brisket on. So you want, you want your brisket, when you put it on, you want to take your your point and put it towards the fire and your flat away from the fire. This is going to help because it's always going to cook hotter on the point side and it'll cook more evenly. I put my briskets on fat side up. Some people put them on fat side down. That's personal preference. Main thing is you got to have 10 to 12 hours to cook it and you got to keep it to temperature at 250 to 275. All right, let's check on our brisket. Let's open it up here. We've had it on the pit now for about 10 hours. We're starting to look pretty good. This is the point sometimes where your brisket starts to stall out on some people, eight to 10 hours. It'll get to about 165 internal temperature and quit going. And then if you're at this point, and uh, we can look at this brisket here, we're still soft. The bark is still soft on it. We're not getting crust, crust on the outside, a hard crust. At this point, if you're getting a crust on your brisket, you may want to wrap it. Some people wrap, some people don't. At this point, this brisket's still doing great, so we're going to leave it unwrapped today. But if your brisket starts getting a little too much crust on the outside, gets a little too dark, go ahead and wrap it. 
it's not going to hurt anything. So let's put this on for another two hours and this is where your patience is critical. Low and slow is very critical at this point. You cannot force it. So let's close her up and wait for her to finish. All right, we checked our temperature, been on there about 12 hours now. We got our temperature just right. So we're ready to pull her off. We got it on the high side. She should be ready to go. So we're gonna take this brisket, pull it off. It should be nice and flexible when you pull it off. You know it's ready to go. Set it on your board. And now comes another part. Right before we get to the slice, we gotta let this bad boy rest for at least 30 minutes, preferably an hour. But if you got at least 30 minutes to rest so we don't lose any of our juices. Now we got our brisket ready to go. We got the low and slow. So now we come to the third most critical part of this, the slice. So this is where a lot of people can make some mistakes on your brisket. You can take a, a tender brisket and if you slice it the wrong way, it's gonna actually come out tough because you're gonna come along with the grain. So guys, basically you gotta figure out which way your grain's running in this brisket. In this particular brisket on the flat, it's running this direction. So we're gonna start slicing it in this direction. We're getting into the point, which is this part here, where the grain is going to change directions. So we can take this brisket now and turn it 90 degrees and start slicing it in this direction. So when you're slicing your point, which some people are calling going to call their burnt ends, you're going to have right here. So now you're slicing along the grain, and as you can see, the grain here is also going the same way. So this is going to give you a more tender bite when you pick it up and eat it. Okay folks, here we go, our perfect Texas brisket, low and slow. We cooked it, started out, selected the perfect brisket, cooked it low and slow, cut it right. Now it's time to enjoy our birdie and my favorite part. Mm -hmm.